My CNC has a four zone vacuum table, which is great for holding down big pieces of material like a four by eight sheet of plywood. But when I was commissioned by Carhartt to build a guitar for Metallica's not-for-profit all within my hands, I decided that I not only wanted to build a guitar completely on the CNC, but I also wanted to utilize the CNC's built-in vacuum system to hold smaller parts to the table. One of the smaller parts I needed to make for this guitar that would be tricky without specific vacuum fixturing is this neck. This neck was made with a handful of different operations and just a couple of fixtures. The solution that I came up with worked great, so let's get started and make some sawdust. What I'm doing right now is I'm loading the material onto the CNC that I'm going to make my base layer for this vacuum fixture out of. And I'm using 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood instead of MDF because 3 quarter inch MDF is so porous you can actually pull air through it. I'm turning on all of the zones for the vacuum table on my CNC and what this fixture is actually intended to do is to just concentrate the vacuum from one of the four zones on my CNC so that way I can hold smaller parts on my machine while using the main vacuum pump on my CNC. So far what I've done is I've cut a channel for the gasket that's going to isolate the vacuum from the main portion of the CNC to this dedicated fixture. And what I'm doing right now is I have a half inch end mill just cutting this plenum or these slots, whatever you wanna call it, into the bottom of this fixture. So that way air can easily travel underneath the fixture and all the vacuum can be collected onto the top side of this fixture. So how's all that vacuum gonna to get to the top of this fixture? I'm gonna end up drilling a hole through one of those grooves and it's going to be what is essentially a bleeder hole so that the vacuum can come through and hold down the subsequent layers of my vacuum fixture. Before I put that gasketing material into the groove, I'm just, I'm knocking down the edge, I'm smoothing out any burrs or splinters that may have been formed while it was being machined on the CNC. So that way the surface is nice and clean for that gasketing material to sit into. Now the gasketing material that I have, it is adhesive backed. So all I have to do is squish it down into the slot and the adhesive is gonna help to hold it in place. And in all honesty, even without the adhesive, the groove is cut such that it would hold the gasket in place. What I'm doing now is I'm cutting some strips that are gonna locate onto two edges of this vacuum fixture. And they will then locate the fixture at the zero zero point or the origin point on my CNC. The reason that's important is so that I can repeatedly locate this fixture in the same position on my CNC every time. Really all that's needed is some glue and some clamps to hold these strips in place. They're not seeing a ton of force, so just a little bit of glue on the edge of this piece of plywood and clamp it in place, I'm good to go. While the glue is curing on the strips for that base layer of my vacuum fixture, I'm back over at the CNC and I'm cutting for the first layer, so to speak, that is going to be specific to a task of my guitar build. But regardless of what you're making, what I'm really trying to show here is how to utilize vacuum from a big source like a whole table vacuum system to isolate that down to hold smaller parts. So anyways, we're going through that same process. I'm cutting the channel for the gasket, chamfering it, and then I'm cutting this plenum on the underside of this layer. So what I'm doing now is gluing some blocks in a rough location onto the top side of this fixture. And you may be wondering, Mike, what are those going to be used for? So my thought process for this fixture was to have two stations on it for making the neck of this neck through guitar. The first station is going to be used for doing all of the milling and operations on the front surface of the guitar neck. And station number two is there to support all of the geometry and whatnot that's cut in the first machining operation. Once the glue is obviously cured, I am going through basically a 3D carving process. And all that means is that I'm not cutting just a straight line, I'm cutting in three dimensions. So to do that, you first wanna go through what's called a rough milling operation. And that's what's happening here with this big half inch end mill. You see it's just making some very coarse shapes. Uh, it really doesn't look like anything much right now, but it's just hogging out the bulk of the material. Once the rough milling operation is done, the CNC changes over to a quarter inch ball nose end mill, and that's what's gonna be used to refine all of the final geometry. And what's happening is it's just literally going up and down, up and down, as the profile changes in the, uh, in the program for the machine. 
All right, so here's a better shot of what's going on. That quarter inch ball nose end mill is just taking a shallow pass a little bit at a time, cutting away the material that basically just needs to not be there. This is subtractive sculpture at this point. And uh, you see that little ka-chunk there in the side? Well, that's what happens when you are new to CNCing and you forget to double check your zero locations. That was a big whoopsie. Oops. But thankfully I was still able to use this fixture and not have to re-glue anything before I was able to move on. Now I've switched back over to a quarter inch down cut end mill and I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, quarter inch because that's the width that corresponds with the gasketing material that I'm using, but I'm specifically using a down cut end mill so that way I have a nice crisp cut at the top level of my material. I don't want to be pulling up big splinters or chunks out of the material, especially since this is a gasketed surface. Everything needs to be as clean and tidy as possible. Now, if you see, there's a little bit of a cavity, so to speak, inside of where that gasketing channel is, and that cavity is very intentional. What that does is it gives some negative space underneath the material that's being held down to the fixture. So let's pretend that this surface of the plywood is not perfectly flat. Making that cavity removes the potential for an uneven surface to compromise how well the vacuum can hold something to the fixture. And if you notice there are some holes that are inside of that cavity, those holes are what's allowing vacuum to come up through this layer and hold the pieces to the fixture. So I had some packing tape over top of those holes to help keep them sealed in, but obviously when I cut that cavity, that packing tape got cut through, so I need to fill that back up. So that's what I'm doing right here. And basically on the far side of the fixture, uh, we just have a gasketing groove and a cavity. It's all on one plane, and that's the first station on this fixture. And we'll, that'll make more sense here in a little bit. With the neck stock all milled up, which I show in a different video, you can see how those marking lines or those witness lines that I engraved into the fixture help me to locate this stock in place on the fixture so that way I can cut the neck. Now this is one of the coolest things, the most satisfying things to watch with a vacuum fixture is seeing this stuff just like suck down to the table. I know that thing is held in place really firmly because of those locating features. The first station I'm a little bit apprehensive about because this is maple, it's a much harder wood, it's only being held in place with the suction from the vacuum. Just to test all of my programming and make sure that the fixture is going to be adequate, I did run a test piece out of pine, which is what you see in station two right now. And I had all of my feeds and speeds set up for cutting pine, which you can run a lot faster than you can maple. As you can see, the vacuum was not enough to hold that piece of maple in place. Well, that's not good. I did make a minor adjustment, slowed the machine down a little bit, and then I was able to finish out the machining on this first station without any other issues. With all of the machining done at station one, I'm ready to flip over the neck blank and do the subsequent machining operations there on the second station. So station two has a couple of supporting and locating features that match up with everything that was cut in the first operation. That way my neck blank can locate accurately and all of the remaining profiles can be cut exactly where they need to be. I ended up adding a third station to this fixture so that way I could machine my fretboards on the CNC and capitalize on a little bit of extra space on the fixture. So this allows me to obviously make the fretboards much faster but also way more accurately and it opens up the possibility to do some very intricate inlay work which I'm looking forward to on a future build. Because I took the time to design and make these fixtures for the neck and fretboard, it's made assembly of the neck a very easy process. And I dive into this assembly and all the fine details of making the neck for this neck through guitar in subsequent videos. So make sure to check those out too. This is the first in a series of videos I'm putting together to bring you along my journey of building a guitar on the CNC for the first time. So when that next video is ready, you can check it out right here. And if you wanna see some of my non-CNC related woodworking projects, you can check those out. They're in a playlist right here. I hope this video is helpful to give you some ideas of how you can utilize vacuum fixtures, not only on your CNC, but in other areas of your workshop. And until next time, let the sawdust fly and have fun making something.